Alrighty, guys. Um, the sting here from the Horn Project. I just uh, I've got the left console out here. Uh, sorry, right console out here on the bench. I've been doing a little bit of maintenance, adding some stuff and um, a little bit of tidy up, and thought I would just take the opportunity to uh, to maybe talk through exactly how I built this and uh, some of the things I recommend and don't recommend. So. Uh, I didn't, a uh, little bit of background, I didn't use any plans uh, at all for my uh, cockpit. Uh, I should have, I should have used uh, Open Hornet or something like that, but at the time I didn't. I just referenced photos from the internet um, the best I could. I have a whole library full of publications about the F-18 Hornet, so I uh, had plenty of reference material. Uh, and overall, I think, you know, I've captured the look and feel of it um, with its own little nuance here and there and a few little mistakes um, along the way, but nothing that, uh, that I'd consider a showstopper. So anyway, the whole piece is about uh, 1.2 metres long, and that was because that was the size material I had uh, here in the shed in terms of the MDF uh, ply and some, some aluminium rod uh, that I had. The overall construction, yeah, very simple. MDF, uh, there is some lots of ply and there is some metal uh, under in it here as well that's held in by these two. Um, I got a handle at e either end that holds them in. And uh, yeah, very sturdy, uh, nice and solid uh, sort of construction as well. All the panels that you're seeing here are the Tech Creations um, panels. Some of him are his complete panels, so the hook. Uh, the wing fold and the cushions are all his complete units in terms of they've got, well, that one at least has a, um, a Pro Micro sitting with it. Uh, for the rest, they're just the face plates that then I put in my own um, switches and, and knobs uh, on, on top of them there. So all these are really is very simple switches. So most of these I got out of an old Warthog that wasn't working anymore. So um, they're actually very good switches, the old Warthog switch. Um, so they all uh, were repurposed. Um, I just very simply have a connector between this uh, and the Arduino, which I'll show you in a second, um, which just allows me to, I can just take out these screws here. This panel comes out under a connector and I can then take that away. And if I need to replace some switches or rewire or something's come loose, and then um, so be it. So that's for those. Uh, that's the lighting panel. I'll talk about that in a second. And of course that, that's the KY. I didn't have that plugged in because uh, I didn't think it was useful in the game. And then of course, one night my squad decided they wanted to see how it works. So I had to spend a quick afternoon wiring all that up. So they all work now as well, which reminds me I've got to reverse that one. It is backwards. Uh, the knobs are open Hornet knobs uh, that I've printed and painted myself. They're a little bit dodgy, uh, but from the pit, um, it uh, it is fine. In terms of gauges, uh, so for me, I don't, didn't have an access to a 3D printer at the time uh, that I was building all of this. And I'm not sure uh, that I wanted to do that anyway, but all I've done for the gauges here, these three here, and there's the brake pressure one on the other side, is I've just put little OLEDs uh, in each of these. And uh, I'll see if I can whip up a quick picture of how they look in the game. For me, they're fine. They show the information. These lights work here. Um, I can adjust the radar out for that. Nothing to do here with the hydraulics and the battery. Um, yeah, I can see what's going on with that as well. So, so that's uh, that's all fine. This here is just the hook switch. I also use that button for something else, which I've uh, oops, which I've forgotten. Uh, anyway, so that's what that is there. This switch here uh, is the switch to the power supply. So I don't use a, a AV cool in the game um, at all. So I use this switch as uh, an on and off. So for the power supply that I have back here, and we'll talk about that uh, in a second, but that is just a, a quick way for me to shut off the power uh, if I need to, if I smell some smoke or something along those lines, I can quickly flip it up and those lights uh, light up green if um, when I've got it on. So that's really the, the top panel here. I'll just whip around to the side. Uh, I should just say, I, there's the, the side panel here that goes here. 
that USB would normally just sit up there with some with some Velcro. Um, and uh, I hardly ever take this side panel off, actually. This will be the first time I've taken it off in a long time. How I access all the workings from the outside of the pit is I put some doors on the uh, on the panel, which is just some piano uh, hinges here. Uh, and they've been a lifesaver, to be honest. If I had have not done that and only been able to access the other side, then I'd be pulling the pit apart all the time. But by having these doors here um, has really made maintenance uh, and small little uh, upgrades really super easy. So I'll start at the front here. Uh, as I mentioned, old power supply, ATX power supply from an old uh, computer that I had. Uh, plenty of YouTube videos showing you how to, to do that. This all looks very messy, but um, I guess that's because it is. But it, it all makes sense to me. Um, so I just pull, take the power out of here. Um, yellow is 12 volt. Red is 5 volt. Uh, black is ground. And then just, just distribute that power through this for things like the console lighting, flood lighting, chart lighting, uh, mag switches, and uh, instrument lighting. So they're all powered um, through this. Uh, yep, so I've got, that's where I've been doing a bit of work this morning. I've got a mega here running most of this panel. There is a little pro micro on that uh, tech creations thing there. And I've got a little nano here. That's a mega. A uh, little nano here for um, for the OLED that I've just put in this morning. Um, once again, looks messier than it actually is, and that needs to be plugged in somewhere. Uh, in terms of the panel, so as I said there, I don't know if you can see up there, but that's the bottom of the panel. You see I have these connectors here. So if I want to take that panel out, I can just take this connector there, and I've got connectors for each of the impairments. So environment one, Environment 2, electrical 1, this will be to the OLED. Um, yeah, so you can see I can take all of those out and then work on those panels if I need to. And then all of that just runs down here into uh, Arduino Mega. Um, all nicely sort of stacked uh, into there. So what I've got here, I'm not, I don't know what you call it, a breakout board, I don't really know, but either way, I've just taken some grounds from the Mega, uh, put them across here, so for all the grounds and switches I've got, uh, I can actually have multiple uh, connections there. I don't know if that is a thing, but um, it works for me. Uh, I've got a MOSFET down here, which just helps run uh, three things. There's the uh, console lighting, the instrument lighting, and then the mag switch um, there. So if you know much about MOSFETs, you know I've got the 12 volt coming in here, and then the variable power signal that's sent to this side determines the variable power that comes out to this side. So you can turn the, by turning the knob on the uh, console lighting, for example, it varies the power output and therefore how much brightness uh, you get out of the backlighting. And that works pretty simply. My backlighting is a very simple solution. <laughs> I've just got a, a, a board here that's got LED, green LED strip on it. And uh, she just shines up against the panels um, that you can see up there. So I'll see if I can put a photo of that um, somewhere else as well. So I could do a whole video on the lighting uh, in the pit. It was certainly the most complex um, part of the, of the pit. And then I've got a stand little USB um, controller there for that. The two uh, big boxes over here are just dimmer switches. Um, they run both the chart lighting from the canopy bow and the flood lighting. They are the only two things that I don't actually have mapped to DCS. So they're just totally their own. They just take, uh, take five volts in, each of them, and then... Um, off to their lights that are spread around the cockpit. So that's how it all sort of comes together down here. 
I then just terminate it all and it all just sort of, I'll see if I can get a better angle here, sorry. Uh, it all just comes out here. So that's my USB hub that I can then just plug into the computer. This is chart lighting that's coming out here and this is power for the, um, for the USB hub. Of course, the power supply. And then this is how I distribute signal around the console. So for the uh, console lighting, the instrument lighting, some five volt, 12 volt, I just have a, a connection that goes in here. That is just your standard old blue VGA connector. Um, and that's got 12 outputs on it. I think I'm only using nine with some grounds and those uh, those ones coming in there. Then on the, the main instrument panel, I'll have the other connector that will plug into, distribute the lighting through that, and then there'll be an output on the main instrument that whips around to the uh, left console. So that's how I distribute the signal for various things. Uh, you can see here how those pins uh, are done for me. So I'm able to work out exactly at the other end what needs to what needs to go where. So once again, uh, not sure if you meant to use VGA cables to distribute power, but uh, that's what we're doing here today. So I think that is probably all I really need to say um, about that. Part of this is for me to understand um, exactly what I need to do. A couple of the issues that I've got with my pit. This here could be about an inch, inch and a half higher in the real pit and more canted um, out, like, out like this. So I've got that wrong um with all my photos but in the pit it, it's such a non-issue i will most likely never change that these here are just uh, spate, uh plates for now i do intend on putting some not some proper because i don't think the actual horn that has it i'm not sure but some actual uh sort of containers here so i can store my maps and various bits and pieces for when we when we fly uh, I don't want this video to go for too long, so what I'll probably do is I'll just show you the LEDs working uh, in the pit here in a sec. And uh, yeah, you can let me know if there's uh, if there's any dramas going on. And what's actually really cool is right now, formation of four birds. gone full nerd up here at the Horner project so um anything else I wanted to say oh yeah I'm running the mag switch which you can just go to the um Warthog project and look exactly how it works now and wiring I should say it doesn't work beautifully here in um in the Hornet because it's not coded the same way I've you can get it working absolutely 100% with some code from out of the Open Hornet uh, project, I think, or a guy from there as well. Um, mine sort of works, I just have to flip it twice and then it sticks and then it turns off automatically itself. So it's a bit silly, but um, uh, it works for me and, and now that I do it, it, uh, it just happens. So I'm not sure there's anything else I particularly need to let you know. Um, if you're interested in a in how I've done the lighting, just hit me up. Uh, the code and everything, uh, all my Arduino codes are sitting in the GitHub, which I'll put in the description down below, um, just as back up there. Be pretty useless for most people. Uh, most of it's just DCS BIOS. Um, that's really what I'm using to run uh, the whole cockpit, no keyboard emulators or anything like that. Uh, interesting code in it is around the console lighting and potentially the mag switch the rest is pretty uh pretty stock standard flight panels dcs bios Alrighty, guys i'll uh put all this stuff back together in the pit and uh, i'll show you um how it all works all righty here we are back in the pit with the console back in place um, it's got the new Hydraulic gauge put in there. See all my lights doing their thing. Okay, going up and down. Use this little keyboard here, wireless little thing. 
uh, just for some of the game functions uh, as well. And uh, yeah, everything is um, is doing its thing, which is uh, which is awesome. Alrighty, guys. Well, hopefully that's been um, that's been cool. And uh, yeah, I'll do some of the other consoles uh, later on. Alrighty, see you guys.